Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will explore the main modules of the Spring Framework and understand what purpose each module serves and what problems these modules solve in real applications. Spring is not just one thing. It is a collection of different modules and each module focuses on solving a specific set of problems in application development. The beauty of Spring is that it is modular. This means you do not need to use everything. You simply choose the modules your project needs. Let's go through the important modules one by one. The first module is the Spring Core module. This is the base foundation of the entire Spring framework. The Spring Core module provides the dependency injection feature. This means that Spring takes the responsibility of creating objects, providing them to other objects, and managing their life cycle. Before Spring, developers had to manually create and manage objects using the new keyword, which led to tightly coupled code and made applications hard to maintain and test. Spring Core solves this problem by introducing inversion of control. The framework takes control of object creation, not the developer. So whenever you hear someone mention Spring, they are mostly referring to the Spring Core and Dependency Injection System. The next module is Spring Context. You can think of this module as an extension of the Spring Core module. The Spring Context module manages and organizes all the Spring Beans. It provides something called the Application Context, which is the heart of your Spring application. The problem it solves is visibility and accessibility. Your application might have hundreds of bins. Spring Context keeps track of them and supplies the right bin whenever your code needs it. Just like a well-managed office storage room where everything is labeled and easy to find. The next module is Spring AOP which stands for Aspect Oriented Programming. AOP solves a very real problem found in almost all projects, repeating the same logic in many different places. Examples include logging every request, validating authentication, measuring performance, or applying security checks. Without AOP, you would need to write the same code again and again inside multiple classes. This leads to duplicate code and increases chances of mistakes. Spring AOP allows you to write such common logic only once and Spring will automatically apply it wherever needed. It's like installing CCTV cameras in a building. You don't need to hire a security guard for each room. One system watches everything. Next we have the Spring JDBC module. JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. Before Spring, working with databases in Java required a lot of repetitive code. You had to manually open connections, prepare statements, execute queries, handle exceptions, and then close everything carefully. Even a small database query required 30 to 40 lines of code. Spring JDBC solves this by providing JDBC template classes where most of the repetitive code is already handled for you. You simply focus on writing the actual SQL logic. Everything else is taken care of by Spring. Next is the Spring ORM module. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. Spring ORM integrates Spring with ORM frameworks like Hibernate and JPA. The problem it solves is the mismatch between database tables and Java objects. Without ORM developers had to manually convert data from SQL tables into Java objects and convert Java objects back into SQL data. This was error prone and time consuming. Spring ORM allows your application to interact with the database in terms of objects, not SQL. This makes data access much easier and cleaner. The next module is Spring Transaction Management. A transaction means performing multiple steps where either all steps succeed or none do. For example, transferring money between two bank accounts. Money must be deducted from one account and added to another. 
If any step fails, both actions must be rolled back. Before Spring, developers had to manually write commit and rollback statements. Spring Transaction Management allows you to simply mark a method with a transactional and Spring will automatically handle commit and rollback. This reduces bugs and ensures data consistency. Next we have Spring MVC. This module is used for building web applications and RESTful web services. Before Spring MVC, handling a web request in Java required servlets and complex boilerplate code. Spring MVC simplifies this using controller classes, methods to handle HTTP requests, and automatic JSON conversion for RESTful web services. This is the most commonly used module today for building backend services. The next module is Spring Security. Security is a critical requirement in almost every modern application. We need logins, user roles, permissions, session management and protection from attacks. Implementing all of this manually is extremely difficult and risky. Spring Security provides authentication and authorization out of the box. It also protects applications from common security threats. This module ensures your application is safe and controlled. Finally, we have Spring Boot. Spring Boot is not a replacement for Spring. It is a convenient layer on top of Spring. It removes complicated configuration and helps us build Spring applications quickly. Think of Spring Boot as the automatic version of Spring, less setup, fewer configuration files, and much faster development. So to summarize, Spring is made up of different modules and each module solves a real-world development problem. Spring Core and Context handle object creation, Spring AOP handles cross-cutting logic, Spring JDBC and Orem simplify database access, Spring Transaction ensures safe data operations, Spring MVC builds APIs and web applications, Spring Security protects the application, and Spring Boot makes everything easier and faster. This modular architecture is what makes Spring powerful, flexible, and widely used in real-world projects. Alright, that's all for this lecture. I'll see you in the next session.